I know I was going to make the basketball team. I know I'm going to make the soccer softball team. But fencing, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole new area to conquer. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT Podcast, the best sports podcast in New Jersey. Today, I got a special one for y'all. My sister, blood sister, Jade Burnett, West Orange High School graduate, going on to play at Fairleigh Dickinson University for fencing and a criminal psychologist major? No. What's the major? <laughs> Forensic psychology. Forensic psychology, but you're dealing with criminals. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so, before we get into this, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, share, like, tell any and everybody about this episode, your grandmother, your uncle, your cousin, your baby moms, even if y'all don't talk, this episode will probably bring y'all back together. Jay, I want to start here. So, what was your introduction to fencing? Because I heard about it. About it like, yeah, Jay's doing fencing. I'm looking like... I ain't never really heard of fencing. It was never in our family. How did you get introduced to fencing? So I want to say it was the 2016 Olympics, and mom was watching it, and fencing just happened to be on. And we are like, oh, that's cool. Like, that's cool to watch. But, you know, they didn't bring it to the town to, like, what now? Six years ago, so about the same same year. They brought it here, um, got interested in it. We are like, yeah, sure. And um, I had to quit basketball for it, but it was fun. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I, I'm glad you mentioned that you had to quit basketball for it. What about fencing for you, though, had you get rid of other sports? Because you, Jewel, me, we all did multiple sports, basketball, soccer, softball, baseball, track, all of these sports. Mm -hmm. You decided, hey, I'm going to put all my efforts, my time my skill into fencing why fencing i think um because all the sports we played they're all team sports and i think that's what makes fencing a little different the only thing close to that is softball or baseball when you're on the when you're actually batting but fencing you're all alone like you can't get any help like nothing i mean the team is all you know all the scores come back together but there's nothing like it and then on top of that you need something new I feel like I was doing sports since I was four and then get to what, 12, 13, you want something a little new. Cause that was like, I'm the youngest. It's your dreams, right? You guys wanted to play basketball. You guys want to do that. So, you know, I'm not mad. I was put into it, but it's nice to look for something new. Cause then you're more excited to get better at something instead of being like, I know I'm going to make the team. You know what I'm saying? I know I was going to make the basketball team. I know I'm going to make the soccer softball team, but fencing, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole new area to conquer. Now, with that, you mentioned it's a whole new area to conquer. It's being by yourself within it. For you, what would you say had, was the hardest part of fencing and learning how to play it and, you know, improving your skill? I would say your wrists. You don't use your wrist. I mean, basketball, use it to shoot, use it to dribble, but the way you move your wrist for fencing is totally different. You're going, not only are you controlling your own weapon, which is about a pound already, you're controlling someone else's moves. You have to really extend your elbow. That's also new. You know what I'm saying? You don't really use your elbows that much. You use your elbows what they're for, to, to move your arms. But you don't think about how fast your elbows can really be. Like, we went to our trainers because we were, this was an issue where I was like, I could be so much more explosive. And one of our trainers was like, try boxing. It's the same movements. Mm -hmm. And it's the same elbow speed that you need. And that really helped me that year a lot. And I think that that's a big issue when you, you don't think about that. It's the small things you don't think about. That's true. Because I didn't think nothing about that. First couple of times I went, I'm like, I'm confused. But I just see you keep getting points. And it seemed like nobody was doing athletic skill. Nobody's fast <laughs> enough. So I was just like, hey, I'm going to just go with that. But I didn't understand or really know what went into fencing and the skill behind it and what type of workouts you guys do. You just mentioned boxing. For you, you know, you're going into college now, freshman year. Uh, your coach loves you. You got a scholarship for it. 
big things on the horizon. What are you looking though this summer and just throughout your collegiate career? What are you looking really to try to improve and be better as a fencer? My goal is when it comes to winning to at least be number five on the qualifier list for divisionals because the way they work it, you have your personal record that season and you could only send a certain amount of people to divisionals. So even if I don't get sent, which I understand freshman year, a lot of seniors in front of me, a lot of upperclassmen in front of me who I plan to learn from. I think that's also the biggest thing. Even if I don't have the best freshman year, just learning from these people that I would have never met. Like my coach, he is a great, great coach. He fenced at St. Peter's growing up. Like he's him and being able to learn from him. And then like all the upper classes we have, I can't wait. I think that's the biggest thing, learning. So the aspect of learning, right? What do you feel you could probably learn to improve your game? Is it the speed? Is it technique? What do you feel that you could learn from these people that, like you said, St. Peter's, he's him. You have people that have, I think, went to the Olympics or almost qualified for the Olympics. That's on a part of the upperclassmen. So for you, like, what do you feel that you could possibly learn and be able to apply to your game? I think it's things as simple as footwork. Because with fencing, footwork is if I take a bigger step or a smaller step or a small, then big, then a big, then small, and it completely changes that point and that bout where – you could always go back to regular techniques, do the same parry 20 times, do the, the, but the little things like footwork, it just goes like, you could be easily so lazy with it because it's all in your legs. You're tired. He's talking about running up and down stairs. And I'm like, bro, I don't want to do that right now. But that's the thing that's going to set you different because a lot of these girls are like six foot, six, two, six, three. And to go against someone that tall, you have to switch up the lane. Because I'm trying to keep my distance from you, right? But you could easily attack me at any point. I got to confuse you with the distance, too, and control it yourself when you're on the shorter side. So I think footwork will definitely help that. Yeah, I think that's any sport when you talk about it. Footwork is, is huge across boxing, football, soccer, basketball. You get your footwork down. That's a that's a big part of being successful for our listeners and our viewers. If you could break down for them, how do you get a point? How do you score? How do you win in fencing in your match? Because like I said, the first time I went, I was told you won. <laughs> that's all I knew. And it seemed like he was just too fast with him. But I didn't know how it was a point or not. I just said, Beep! that's a point. OK, what happened? And he was moving so quick, so I didn't catch what happened. It was like, beep, another point. Beep. It's over. All right. <laughs> I came for about 10, 15 minutes and was able to go home. That, that was way quicker than when he was playing basketball or any other sport. <laughs> but how? How do you win? How do you get a point in fencing? All right. So there's three different weapons. Foil and saber are kind of like epe is kind of on your own. whole different thing. I do epe. And epe... I touch you, that's a point, right? You touch me at the same time, it's about like 0.5 seconds or something if we touch within the same time, double point, right? Happens a lot more than you would think because it's you would think it's half a second, but it happens a lot. You have three minutes to get to five. Sometimes it's 15. It matters what like tournament you're in, but that's pretty much it. For Epe, you can hit toe to head anywhere, glove, Shoulder, knees, toes, anywhere, right? Foil and saber are a little bit different. They have right away, which if I'm attacking you first and we both score at the same time, the person attacking gets it. Now, there's like rules to it, like if you parry and counterattack, all that. And then they have target areas. So they have only, like foil, I believe, is only the like tank top area. Okay. And sabers the whole upper body. But, yeah, that's how you score. I mean, that's very simple, but that's the premise. That's a lot. That, <laughs> that's, that's not the easiest thing to do. Um, if y'all want a more in-depth breakdown, let me know, and we can have her back on, and she can break down the parry and uh, all that good stuff right there. For, for you, right, 
somebody that's watching this, somebody is viewing this, or somebody that you run into, like you said, you're looking forward to the upperclassmen. When you become that upperclassman, what advice would you give to somebody that wants to, you know, get started in the fencing or has the goal of, hey, I want to actually do fencing in college? I would say go to club. It's expensive. It could be very expensive, but even if it's just one month, one week, once throughout the year you have to go to club even if it's just one tournament you enter yourself in you got to go because you're going to see different people mattering what state you're in like new jersey's really good for high school fencing like i don't know how we just happen to be in a really good state for it but we're in a really good state for uh, high school fencing if you're not in the state your school might not have it even if you are here it's a niche expensive sport so what i would say is if you, your local club has a deal, go for it. Because if you are at school and you are fencing for your school, you're fencing the same people every day, right? Speaking of the six foot people I fence, uh, lefties, um, people shorter, faster, taller, that's the people you're gonna meet at club. That's the people you're gonna meet at a tournament. That's the people you're not gonna fence every day. So would you rather see them during practice or when it's the final round of states and you're like, oh no, what do I do? Like that experience, are just going really, really doesn't because you you see what's wrong. Like at school, respectfully, of course, I can fence all of them. You know, there are guys that are taller because it is a unisex team, but you know, I know what to do against them. When you just randomly go out, you don't know, and it also builds rapport with people in your community because I'm friends now with people from Melbourne, from Montclair, from other places that fence. And, you know, it's like a reunion when we go play them. I mean, obviously it's competitive, but it's nice to go and be like, hey, Montclair, now I got I to gotta X that out. Got to go against her there. Or Milburn, we got we to gotta beat them at Milburn. And it's nice, you know? For you, that's, that's great information for anybody that's watching. That's across, I think you say, all sports and just life in general. You want to be able to study your opponent's get different experiences. So like you said, you're prepared. You're not in the championship and then you're seeing somebody that's a six foot four lefty. You don't know what to do. And now you're scared. And now it's a whole nother thing. You're nervous and you got to, from what it's from how you're explaining it, then in a situation like that, how fencing is, it's not like basketball. It's not like football where you can maybe call a timeout per se. And the coach is running up a play and like, all right, we saw this or at halftime. We make it, we make changes. We make some adjustments that you're going to have to figure out on the fly in between. And from what you explain, it's a three minute. That's not a lot of time to not figure that out. And it's the five. I've been there. Y'all that five could go like, it don't take the full three minutes. A lot of the times. Yeah. So that, that definitely is important in that for sure. For you, before we transition to the fourth quarter segment, y'all know this segment, the more fun segment, get to know them, a little rapid fire, things of that nature. For you, right, What do you have a routine? Is What's your pregame routine? Are you the type you're going to listen to music? Are you, you need to be quiet and you're going to envision what you're going to do? What is your pregame routine? Um, I think it's different for every team I'm facing. It's gonna be. It's gonna have to be different in college, because we're facing like seven teams in one day. But it matters, because I don't want to. For me, I don't want to be too superstitious, superstitious, mm -hmm. and then I get in my head about everything. So I try to let everything kind of just go. So if the night before I get two hours of sleep or ten hours, I still have to be able to go. And if, if I, you know, listen to music. Forgot my headphones, my phone's dead. I still gotta be able to go somehow. I try, I think, as a teammate and as a as a captain, I try to just keep it very light. I feel like I'm a jokester on the bench a lot. Just talking, just just getting people out of their heads. Um, and including myself. Like being able to just be like, yeah, that math test was hard today. Not even thinking about fencing. Because it has to you can't think too much. Like we'll Look at their record. We'll see how many points they scored or whoever. But we'll look at film even. But it's like, that don't matter at the end of the day. Because they could change something else. They could have learned last week a new skill, a new technique. You learned a new skill, a new technique. This is the time to show it, you know. 
or whatever you think was, the game plan was not working. Like you said, you got three minutes. And when it's 4-1, <laughs> you got to pull something through. So, yeah, I think I just try to not focus. Like, focus for those three minutes, and then the rest is just going to be fun. That's a good approach, too, because when you think about it, like you said, the main thing is you don't want to overthink. You just want to trust your work, trust mm -hmm. the, the film you watch, trust the time that you put in, trust that you put in the work and then just go out and do it. The you overthinking yeah. sometimes because then you get in your own way when you did the work. Now, I think you could attest to this. Those that have not done the work, that haven't studied, that haven't worked on their footwork, you overthinking because you're not prepared. Yeah. If you prepare, just let it flow. Go out there and kill. And then also, like, I had a bit of a slump my senior year going into it i think it was first game first two games i did not win once that's six matches and it was just like like i was so frustrated i was throwing my helmet when i got out like i was mad that first win it calmed me down it got me out of my head i was like i know like the biggest thing is when you know you can beat someone and you don't and that goes for everything that goes for job opportunities that just goes for tic-tac-toe like it goes for everything it just frustrates you more. So I just knew I had to put more work in. It's a wake-up call a little bit. So your preparation the other five days of the week, what were you doing? And when you look back on it, you're like, yeah, I wasn't really doing that. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what you need, I think. Fourth quarter segment. Y'all know we love food on this show. I'm a foodie. I eat for four may not look like it but i eat for four i love cooking i love eating all that good stuff our sister does food reviews so that it's in the family for you one meal that you could eat and not get tired of mm, honestly grilled cheese oh <laughs> i was not expecting that answer grilled I like cheese a good grilled cheese so we're doing just a plain classic grilled cheese or you you elevating See, it that's the thing you could elevate it if you want to elevate it. <laughs> you get some tomato in there. Maybe you feel fancy spinach, bacon. Becomes a BLT with just cheese. So I, that's grilled cheese is a solid, solid sandwich right there. Hey, so that's one of Nikki's favorite sandwiches. When she hears that, she's going to love that answer. Because grilled cheese, like you said, it's so versatile. And the size that could go with it, a good chip. A good fry tomato soup mm. if you're going with the classic one like you said you could do the caramelized onions and add some bacon to it and you could decide matter of fact i want to add some meat let me put exactly. a little chicken with it a couple chicken pieces sourdough bread you can do brioche bread it's it's very different cheeses to add you got a 10 cheese oh mm. yes <laughs> you got the american cheddar you got the asiago it's a yeah that's that's a whole thing right there for you, right? Mm -hmm. Fourth quarter segment. We're going to go with this one. You're a part of the social media age. Would you like, if you had to choose one, TikTok or Instagram? TikTok. Every day. <laughs> Every day, respectfully. TikTok or Snapchat? TikTok. Oh, my God. So TikTok is the, the king of apps for you? Right now, yeah. Okay. Either... TikTok or YouTube. But the problem with YouTube is you got to wait for people to post. TikTok, someone's always going to be posting. Mm -hmm. YouTube, you got to wait. You're like, refresh. We still didn't post. Refresh. You watch their whole page already. <laughs> you just got to wait. That's true for that one. Uh, stranded on an island. Mm. Three must-haves. Phone is not one of them. Pocket knife or any type of knife. Okay. Got to keep yourself safe. Mm. Flashlight, it gets dark. And honestly, a comforter or like some type of duvet, something, because it gets cold. I'm not trying to. If I if I die on an island, I want to get like eaten by a random animal, not like or starve, not like you're freezing to death. That's annoying. That's probably a tough way to go out, right there. <laughs> Last one we have for you. If you were to win the lottery whatever it is right now whatever number it is first three things that you would purchase Oof. probably my whole tuition i mean is luckily not a lot 
but it's just something you don't have to worry about. Mm-hmm. Then, don't know how much is left on the mortgage, pay the mortgage. Okay. Anything else needed to be done in the house, pay the house off. And then might give me a car. You know, that's a nice little car. Good what type of car would you get? Mm. You know, I really used to like a Mini Cooper. Mm-hmm. But this weather is kind of crazy recently, so I'm kind of scared in, in, a, in a little car. Um, since I have the money to spend, probably like a Porsche, Porsche SUV, something around those lines. Okay, as long as you said SUV, cause it <laughs> has to be an SUV if you're staying in Jersey for sure with, <laughs> with this weather, most definitely. But y'all, there y'all have it. Jay Burnett, make sure y'all keep in talk, keep in tune. Fairly Dickinson University. Fencing, really like that. Y'all know the vibes though here on Bench Mob. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Bench Mob ENT, we out. Peace.